Welcome to Smeg's Foodie Guide of the UK. Now, Smeg are an Italian brand, but they've set us a challenge. Go and find out about all the food in all the regions of the UK. We were in Cornwall last week. We're going to Devon this week. We've got loads in this week's episode. So I'm Scott Connell. I'm your host. I've got Alice and Claire. They're the home economists from Smeg. We've got them out to the kitchen and we are traveling this summer is all about, well, food for us. The sport has been brilliant, but the food is even better. Devon, here we come. episode brings us to the county of Devon. It's famous for many, many things, but it's got two national parks. It's got two coastlines, which are incredible, but it's more famous for, Claire. Of course, the Devonshire cream tea. So in this episode, we're going to be exploring how to make the perfect scones. We're also going to make clotted cream and taste the best jam, but more importantly, learning the etiquette of what is the Devonshire cream tea. So keep on listening. Don't go anywhere. Well, here we are. We've arrived in Tavistock on the Tyve River. It's a market town, but more importantly, it's the birthplace of the cream tea. We've got the Abbey. We've got the Bedford Hotel. We'll tell you about them a little bit later. But Dr. Jerry Parby, thank you so much for joining me. You are an art historian. What better place to be? It's a, it's a great pleasure to be invited to join you. And yes, we're in Tavistock. This is what's left, little bits of the abbey, are, uh, sadly, all we have left. Uh, and the abbey was built in the 10th century and it was rebuilt uh, in the 10th century because the Vikings decided to burn the original abbey down. Oh. I know, they those do that Vikings. sort of, oh, those Vikings get everywhere. So when they had to rebuild it, the monks were so grateful, apparently, so the legend goes, with the, the, the actual workers that they served them the cream tea. Uh, now, not quite the cream tea we know today, uh, but it was still a wonderful gift to be giving to the workers and they enjoyed the fact that they were being looked after by the monks at that point. So a little bit of the abbey here. Uh, as you can see, the ground level has raised over the centuries, but this is a, a bit that's left of the abbey cloister. So you get the lovely sort of Gothic arch there uh, and it covered once the whole of what is now Tavistock. So an incredibly wealthy abbey. Uh, and a very important abbey in the West Country. Here we are in the visitor centre and we're looking at the map of the original outlay of the abbey. It's 1,100 years old. It's absolutely incredible. Oh. So where are we on the map? Well, that big circle there that says you are here, which is the great court of the abbey. Um, and the abbey would have, would have actually followed that line there. So you can see the River Tavy there. Uh, and what's, well, there's very little left of the Abbey now. So where the Bedford Hotel is, is, is sort of in this area here. It's a huge layout. Uh -huh. um, how much of this is actually left? Very, very little. So you've got the, the court gate where um, the, the monks actually handed out the cream teas to those ah. builders originally in that area there. You've got a little bit of the uh, of the walls left and the still tower, which is part of the Bedford Hotel garden. Can we go and have a little look at some of those pockets? Absolutely, yeah. So, Jerry, this is one of the most iconic places, not only in Tavistock, but in Devon itself. In the West Country, no less. Yeah, exactly. In England. Yes, this is indeed where the monks are said to have handed out cream teas, or what I'll explain was a cream tea, uh, to the good people of Tavistock and the workers when they were rebuilding Tavistock Abbey. You get a real sense of the history, don't you, mm. of, it, uh, of it here, because 110 years ago, the hustle and the bustle, but the cream tea would have been totally different, wouldn't it? Well, it would have been different, certainly when the monks were, were serving it uh, back in the 10th, 11th century because in those days, uh, what they were serving with that sort of gift to the workers would have been rye bread. Ah, oh, right. It would have had clotted cream, clouted cream, clouted cream, clouted cream as it was known, uh, on the top, uh, which is why cream should always go first. Ah. Uh, whatever the Cornish will tell you. Uh, but they wouldn't have had jam on the top because jam didn't exist at that point. So, so what would they have had then? They would have had honey. Ah, oh, right, okay. Probably honey, and clearly not a cup of tea. 
because that didn't come until the 19th century, really. Oh. Also, they were not scones, just ah. to confuse you even more. So they had a variety. They, it was a sort of um, almost like a bread roll, yeah. uh, but it had wonderful names. So whichever part of Devon you were from, your bread roll had its own name. So you had the Chudleys and here, in Tavistock, we had what was known as the Tabby Tufts. So if, if you really were going to sit down and uh, what we have today as the cream tea, when would you really have recognised it? You would have probably recognise it in about the middle of the 19th century. Ah, right. The Duchess of Bedford invented the afternoon tea. Now, the Bedford Hotel serves an afternoon yes. tea. Uh, and of course, the Bedfords owned Tavistock at this point. Uh, but the Duchess of Bedford so the story goes, um, was actually visiting uh, a friend of hers uh, and is feeling a bit peckish in the afternoon. So the Duchess decided that she was going to order a plate of sandwiches, scones yeah. with jam on, uh, and other little tidbits to have in the middle of the afternoon. Ah. And she invented the afternoon tea. Now, at this point, tea was being imported much more readily through yeah. the East India Company. So ships like the Cutty Sark were bringing in gallons and gallons of tea, yeah. or tea leaves rather. And so suddenly you get this, um, this very fashionable afternoon tea idea, but because tea had become cheaper, it became much more uh, accepted and widely popular amongst ordinary people. Cream teas became the thing, and at that point, the scone overtook the poor old Tabby Tuff, so oh. we were left with the scone. But, um, so what you see today has sort of evolved over the centuries. It certainly has. Don't let the Cornish tell you they invented the cream tea because they didn't. Uh, but the, there is this ongoing battle between Devon and Cornwall about who invented the cream tea and whether cream or jam goes first. And they do the same with the pasty as well. Do they? They do. And what they did a few years ago, and they'll probably deny this, but there, there was a story in, uh, on the BBC website that claimed that they had discovered prehistoric cave paintings in a cave on the Lizard Peninsula showing a prehistoric man eating a pasty. <laughs> and, that... and is it true? No. No, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. I mean, I, I do quite a bit of work on prehistoric art, so yeah. I can tell you it's not true. And so they, they were trying everything that yeah. they can to actually show that the pasty originated in Cornwall. That's brilliant. Uh, shall I tell you the story of the clouted cream? Yes, please. Okay, so why is it called clouted cream? It's not because it's clotted. It's because of the way it was produced, the way it was made. Um, it was sort of put in a, a, in a, a sort of hot vat so that the cream went to the top of the um, cow's milk. And over time, it formed like a crust. Yeah. And that crust was known as, as a clout. Ah, right. Uh, because it looked like a piece of material. Yeah. And if you know the saying, don't cast a clout till May is out. Yes. So it's meant to, rep it looked like a piece of material so that suggestion is it became known as clouted cream ah. and then it sort of evolved into clotted cream so there fantastic you go. <laughs> well there we are i now know all about the history of clotted cream the scone we know when they were put together i think it's time now to go and meet sarah who actually owns the bedford hotel and maybe have a little clotted cream have a little cream tea and as well, find out a little bit more about the etiquette, because that's important as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. If you're in Devon, cream first. Cream first. Cream well, there first. we are. I hope I don't let myself down. <gasps> Jerry, thank you so it's much. It's been a pleasure. It's been absolutely wonderful. <laughs> right. I've got to go. See you soon. OK. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for inviting us to the home of the cream tea, the Bedfordshire Hotel. And you're the owner. And you know everything about cream tea. I hope so. A very warm welcome to you both. How many would you sell a year then? Well, we've got two hotels. We've got the Bedford here and the two bridges up on the moor. And between the two hotels, we sell about 18,000 <gasps> wow. cream wow. teas a year. Wow, that's a yeah. lot of cream teas, isn't it? It is. And you've very kindly um, supplied us with the perfect cream tea. So we've got our, our well, enormous size scones. We've got... uh, 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 scone. Scone. Scone, Sarah, come on, let's go. Scone. 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 Yeah. Scone. Scone. <laughs>
And you must, you're scored. I must be scored. It must have been the natural thing that came out. It tastes the same, or don't it? Yes, it absolutely. It tastes the same. Tastes yeah. the same. Um, and we've got a, some clotted cream and we've got some jam. So those are your three main components of the right. cream tea. They are, and they're very special to us because the scones are all made on site and the clotted cream is a uh, language cl clotted cream and that comes from a, a dairy herd of Jersey cows. So later on, Scott, we're going to have a go at making some clotted cream. It sounds very yeah. difficult. And today we've got, well, we always use um, Hogsbottom strawberry jam. What a great name. What <laughs> yeah. a great name. I'm not sure of the origin of the name, but um, it's, it's a great name. It's a great product as well. And that, again, is local. So this is a, this is a jam and it's a strawberry, a raspberry. It's strawberry. We always use strawberry jam for our is it, it all, It's always strawberry. Yes, yes. So if somebody comes out along well, with a cup of coffee and a raspberry jam, they're kicked out. <laughs> no, we don't kick them out, but we, we, can, we can offer other jams on request, but that, this is our traditional cream tea. Oh, lovely, lovely. I do we do scones with sultanas and raisins in it, but is it always plain with you? We always do plain, yes, always plain. So um, we've been talking about the cream tea and at the Bedford Hotel and you selling it um, and, and serving it to your customers. Do you serve it the traditional way? So everything we talked about, the, the scone, yeah. the scone, the clotted cream, the jam, being strawberry. We do. We stick to tradition. We do. We stick to tra tradition and um, everything's always fresh. The scones are always out the oven, so they're always served warm. You can smell them, but yeah. they're still that little bit warm. Right. And I think we should get stuck in before they cool down. You were explaining so earlier, a lot of people would cut yeah. into them, but that's not the way really... Well, the traditional way is to split them by hand. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not so traditional, so I do, I will split them with my knife and then just break them apart. Are you going to use uh, your I'm, I'm traditional. very large so traditional be, hands yes, to um, break I am, them apart? Yes, I'm going to go, if this doesn't go right then... then I'm uh, look, look, oh, it's, very it's, it's good, actually, excellent! Well, if you have a look at it, before you actually, look at that, it's got the natural There's, line, yeah, it's, it's got there. the natural line yeah. for it, doesn't it? And that's the true sign of a great scone. scone. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, oh, oh, amazing. Perfect. And well do you know what you've got there is just beautiful levels and craters where all of that jam and cream can soak into. So ah, maximum right. layering. This is the thing though, because mm -hmm. we've got to remember, right? We're in Devon and it is the Devon Cornwall. It is the divide, isn't it? Explain to us the Devon way first. Well, it, here in Devon, we, use, we put the, clink, the cream on first and then we put the jam on top. And in Cornwall, they have it ran the other way, so they have the, the jam on first and the cream on top. And because you invented it, yeah. yeah. It's the right way, it's definitely the cream on the bottom. And do you right. know why okay. I think this is the best way? Why? Because you can use it like and spread it like butter and you can put more cream on because it doesn't cause to be slipped off by the jam. Sometimes, because, you know, I'm such a nice person, I don't like to offend anybody, Shall sometimes I put the cream on first and then I put jam on I feel so bad then about Cornwall, I put cream on top again. <laughs> so you go for a so triple layer. I just don't like, I just don't like upsetting people. Wow, that's, 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 look that's at that. You've, the, you've missed the scone. Oh well, no, we usually put it on the side of the plate. Should do. Oh, this is yeah. etiquette, you is see. It? Pop yeah. it on the side and then you can go back and do your triple layer without, you know, damaging the cream with bits of strawberry in it. Oh, do you know that? And there's a little, a little trick to Scott. Okay. Scott, with um, the cream, if you use the two spoons. Is that why you want two spoons? And okay. then you... Pull it up and then you ah, just right. push it off with a... Ah, right. so that's why the two spoons? It is why the two spoons, yeah. See? So do, you know, do, you know when they, do you know when they do that on, on cooking shows and stuff like that and they go, oh, 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 and they make it into the a little... Lovely quenelle. Yeah. It's a quenelle. Little I know. <laughs> I, I, you didn't know. No, I didn't, like you no, didn't I know. Do that, so I was just, it's a quenelle. And I, I, every time I'm watching a cooking show, they do it and I think... Can you show us your quenelle? Yeah. Well, Have you ever made a quenelle? It's 20 stone of me, isn't it? It's going to be 20 and a half stone of me after this. So, so great. Pick it up with so one there. spoon, scrape it off with the other. I don't think you can do a cornell with a clotted cream. It's, sort of, it, <laughs> it's too it, gooey. It, it, thick, it sticks everywhere. Fantastic. Right. And then the same with the jam. Same with the so jam. So to use the two spoons. Yeah. Right, we are definitely learning the etiquette of the cream tea. And now I need to get it across the table <laughs> without decorating the tablecloth. Oh, well done. Look at that. Oh, perfect. Well done. So ladies first, Sarah. Yes, yeah, that's oh, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll do that because then I, I can have the rest. Well, I'm not wasting any time. No. I'm going to get stuck in. I should use the knife then, do you? Knife now. And this is now your own, is this right, Sarah? Your own knife to do whatever you yes, will on yes. your own plate. All ah, right, okay. Awesome. All those years. All those <laughs> years. wrong. And there's no, there's no right or wrong in terms of the amount of, no. of clotted cream. The more the better. 
Well, this is what I say, because whenever yeah. I go um, for a, a cream tea, I am dead set on just making sure that there is enough clotted cream. And when it yeah. arrived at our table earlier, I was very pleased <laughs> because if we want more, there is more. And I yeah. think a good couple of mil thick of cream is the way to do it. Yeah, lots of cream. Oh, I, I love lots of cream. Yeah, but that's what it's all um, about because it's not an everyday occurrence, is it, a cream no. tea? It's something that, you know, it's a special occasion or if you're out with your loved one or if, if you're out as a, as a group of people, you go in the afternoon, you just little, want a little, you know, sort of perk me up. You want, you want a live in it. And, and then that's just perfect, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Right, here we go. And that is to be enjoyed. It is delicious. So, so good. Oh. You've got that nice outer crust of the, the scone. You've got that fluffy centre, the cream, the jam that's sweet against the creaminess. It's lovely. It's so light. The scones are nice and light. Yeah. It's almost the cream is the texture. Mhm. Mm it's you, the heaviness you, 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 compared yeah, you, to you the. Yeah, you bite through the cream, and the uh, and the jam, and then it's almost it's it's like it's like air. It's oh, it's beautiful. That's all good. So good. Glad you're enjoying beautiful. it. It's really really lovely. Thank you. Uh, Can I just say <laughs> to the Duke and Duchess of Bedford and to Lord Sandwich, thank you, <laughs> thank yes. you thank so you for, much. For one of the best forms of cake and dining and tea yeah. that you could ask and for. And you know what the other thing is? Do you know why the afternoon tea and the cream tea are so different? Go on. You could just eat that all day, can you? <laughs> you just don't have to eat it in the afternoon. You could eat it all day. You can, and we serve them from 10 o'clock in the morning right through to 10 o'clock at night. Do you? Yeah. So oh. you don't have to rock both, up in the afternoon no, and get any time of day? Both hotels, you can get cream teas any time of day or This night. is you my kind of hotel. I tell you what, if you don't want the original cream tea come to the Bedford Hotel. It is absolutely incredible. Right, we're going to finish this off, but oh. can I just ask a quick, quick question? Where can we get some of the jam? Because we are going today to have a look to where they make and they produce the scones, scone, and we may need a little bit of jam. Oh, a bit well, of jam. Th thank you both very much for coming. Really enjoyed your visit. It just happens that I thought you might like to take some home, so Here's a, um, a jar of Hogsbottom strawberry, strawberry jam, jam to for top you. off what will be our perfect cream tea. Thank you for, very much. Thank you so much for oh, having us. Yes. Thank it's you. been Thank wonderful. Thank you so much. And Thank for the you. etiquette and everything about Thank the cream you. tea we could possibly wish to know. Yeah, you know that etiquette bit. Can you cut the camera now because I'm going to finish this off <laughs> and you don't want to see this. <laughs> Well, this week we managed to get down to the beach again because, of course, we are in Devon, the most beautiful beaches. But we can't go for a little bit of a walk along the beach this week because apparently, Claire, you've got me doing some work. I absolutely have. So we're going to visit Heel Corn Mill. I'm going to meet David, the master miller, and he's going to show you how it all works. You're going to have a go. Ooh. And I'm going to go into my favourite place, which is the kitchen with Cathy, the master baker. We're going to learn how to make perfect scones. Right. Come on, then. To the mill. Let's go. Here we are in Heel Corn Mill, and I've been so lucky to be invited inside. David, the owner, uh, is here. How long has this mill been here? Uh, since 1525, uh, Lord Fitzwarren built a new mill at Heel, and he was paying 12 pence a year for the ladies' water uh, so that he could mill here. Um, and it's been milling on and off ever since. It's absolutely wonderful. And how long have you owned it? Um, this is our 12th season now, yes. And were you... Uh, miller before you came no, here? a furniture maker. A furniture maker? Yes, I just wanted something more traditional to sort of get my teeth into. Oh, that's wonderful. And how long has it taken you to master the art of milling? I don't know whether I've mastered anything, but um, I, I do mill. Um, it, it's a fairly simple process it, you, and you, you learn by your mistakes quite quickly. These are the stones that you grind with, are they? Yes, I mean this is an original set, so these are, date back to the 1800s. The grain would be stored up above and come down into a chute into this hopper and then it's fed into a small tray which agitates and the grain falls into the stones and it's ground round and then falls into sacks down below. The big wheel outside yeah. is incredibly impressive. <laughs> give, give me a sense of how this works because we've had a little look round okay. and this intrigues me. This is absolutely right. wonderful. It's so simple but yet so effective, isn't it? Right, okay, so you, have, you can just see the, the edge of the launder which is the chute where the water will travel down over the top of the wheel because it's an overshot wheel. Yeah. And that controls a little trap door just behind so that when you don't want it to work, you move it one way and the water drops behind the wheel. As you move it forward by increments, you can get more and more water and then you get up to the speed that you want the stones to be traveling at. So every time that wheel goes around once, 
the stones will go around 16 times, and that's three quarters of a ton, uh, moving uh, when it's at full speed, about the speed of a car doing 30 mile an hour. But it's a very simple process, as I say, so you can control the water. There are no brakes, so if anything goes wrong, you just got to wait. Uh, that's the worry. <laughs> patience. Yes, patience. you've got to have patience. So David, obviously you've invited me in today and you're very kind. Oh, we are going to try some of the beautiful scones uh, a little bit later. Okay. Um, but I, 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 I'm not here for free. I've got to do a bit, a bit of work. Well, we do have a small set of stones for you that we hand powered, which you might be able to manage. I think I, I, think I can do that. So David, you've got two contraptions. One's a uh, mortar and pestle, yeah. it? And this is a, a hand, not a hand quern. A hand quern. So this this is almost what somebody in their home would do yes, if they've got a, so. a, 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 a small uh, bit of grinding to do. So right, wh which one do we start with? Okay, well let, let's let's go back as far as you can back in history and see how long it takes you to just grind a few a few seeds. Is that enough? Do? Yeah, is that yeah. enough? Lovely. So we... don't hit them too hard at, at first, otherwise they'll end up all on the floor. That's okay. Have so a go. I've, 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 probably got, I've probably got 30 or 40 seeds in there. Right, now give us some beans now. Give us some beans, all right. Okay. Now, oh wow. So it's obviously going to take an awful lot of time before you get some flour, but you can see the flour beginning to appear now. It is. This is like going to the gym. Yeah, so they would have most probably had a stone and they would have worked it in a, in a platform. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to move on to um, something a little are, bit easier and a little bit closer to what we have here. Right, right. honestly, we stones. haven't even got enough for like half a score now. It's not, well, I don't know if we've, if we've got for enough for the top. No, so there you are. So inside a, a, a grain of wheat, one fifth is white flour, Yeah. three fifths is brown flour, and one fifth is bran, which you'd find in your breakfast cereal. Oh, right, okay. okay. But the, the one fifth of white flour is really poor nutritionally wise. So that's why it has all these additives in of um, calcium and iron and, and, and such like. Um, but so wholemeal is the way to go if you're going to keep healthy. Oh, it is. It so certainly is. There's Absolutely. a tip of the day. And that's the three fifth. No, no, the whole thing. The whole, whole thing. meal. The whole meal. All right. Okay. Yeah, white, so brown, and bran. Ah, right. Okay. That's why it's called whole meal. There ah, you go. right. Okay. Now well, let's have learn, a go. We're learning something new every day. We're learning something new every day, right? If I put them in there, and this now. Right. So it, into the centre of the stone, and now the pattern between the two stones. Uh, as you drive it anyway. Try it going the other way first of all, the other way, and right. you'll see so, nothing will happen because it's actually we're driving going, we're going everything left. into this. So nothing What's happened. That? Oh yeah, yeah nothing. Top. So now drive it in the right direction. Ah, you, 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 you feel you, you, yeah. you could feel more of a grind in there. Yeah. And there, oh, it's coming out instantly. Well, David, thank you so much for show, showing me around. Um, can we go and eat some now? Please do. Thank you very much. So I'm just waiting now for the old cream tea to come and see how that's tasting out here with my friend the Robin. Where we have Ooh. it. Hello, you two. Hello, look at this. We've been hard How in the you? kitchen. Ah, <laughs> that's what you've been doing, have you? Yep, Scott, well, this be, is Cathy. Well, Hello, I've been literally you? grinding there. Hello, Cathy. <laughs> nice to see you. And oh, you. Right, are come these, in this way. Are these the scones or scones that we've been hearing so much about? Whatever you want to call them, we will call them the same. What do you um, call them? Well, I call them scones because I'm from Essex. <laughs> right, so <laughs> you, 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 you eat the scones and I'll eat the scones. Yeah, can we tuck in? Yeah, do. Yeah, Lovely. Have yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go for a fruit one. You've been up I, one of yeah. these all oh, day, haven't you? I'm, I'm, I'm going to go fruit too, Cathy, because they look amazing. They're well, so big. I'm going to go for a split. Um, That's a good idea. I'm a bit fruity when it comes to my scones. I do like them. So, Cathy, can you just, because um, maybe we should share with Scott. So I just, i got to remember now, cream first. Yes. Cream right. first, because we're in. Yes. Don't, don't want to upset seven. anybody. <laughs> and it's sensible, isn't it? It's like having the butter. Yeah. So we've been talking about in the kitchen, and you've been showing me the recipe, hmm. the flour that you use isn't plain. No, I use self-raising flour for the scones. Um, but I use a pretty basic recipe. I don't use the buttermilk or sugar or these complicated recipes. Mine is just purely flour, baking powder, margarine and milk. Um, so with the um, scones, we've got the plain and obviously both Scott and I have picked the fruit ones. Yep. Um, how do you make sure that the, the fruit is totally distributed through the scone? Because that's always a tricky one as well. Well, I think as long as you've got enough fruit in there, it will always be throughout the scone really so just go with don't want to be mean yeah <laughs> yes yeah, so don't be mean i think the thing with scones is that people make the mistake is they use a rolling pin to roll it out 
and you need to just be very gentle when you're gathering it all together. Not handle it too much. No, just, just bring it into a shape and flatten it with your hands. And when it comes to cutting with the cutter, you need to just go straight down. No and twisting. Not twisting, yeah. yeah. And the other thing is, of course, you've got to have it thick enough. If you put in biscuits, you get biscuits out. That's so, the mistake I always make. Yeah, I find when I put mine in, the dough is usually the same height as the scone cutter. That's a great tip. So when you put them in the oven, they need to go into the oven straight away. You mustn't leave them hanging around or they will go topsy-turvy. So you put them into a fairly hot oven and after about 15 minutes, reduce the temperature to make sure the heat's gone right through to the middle. So you, that way you get, you should have on your scone like a crunchy outside. I was about to say, I don't know if you can hear that middle. crunch. It was just, it's yeah. lovely, the crunchy outside, but so light in the middle, yeah. isn't it? It's and, absolutely gorgeous. And the way the fruit just... Oh, the texture. Good. Delicious. <laughs> Kathy, amazing. It works then. Oh, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. And do you sell many of the splits? Well, the splits is something that I'm trying to reintroduce because they're very popular, especially with children, mm -hmm. but you have to get people to actually try them. That's the problem. People who are so sort of set in their way of having a scone. Um, but the splits are very easy to eat. They go down quite easily. Are you having one now? I'm only doing this for the purpose of the podcast, obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've eaten most of my other ones, so I yeah. thought I'd try one. Just for fairness. Yeah. I, I think that is fair, actually. I'm down with the kids. Yeah, so you are down with the kids. Yeah, I'm down with the kids, so the kids like well. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I don't think many people make them now, and I think the reason for that is because they take longer to make than scones. Yeah. I mean, commercially, you can do a, a batch of scones in half an hour, whereas these splits would take you about two, two and a half hours for them to rise. What do you think? That's really, really nice. Yeah. So what, how, what's the texture difference then, Scott, between the two? Do you it's say? a bit more dense than the scone. Yeah. Um, and the outside, again, is, is that, you know, you know like that bread roll, perfect crusty. little bread roll where it's warm. Mm. And it's crusty, and inside it's warm, and the, you put the cream on it, and it's almost, it's almost like a butter on top. Yeah, you you you, you keep on asking questions. I'm just gonna <laughs> well, I am it's absolutely lovely. So yeah, so I noticed on the menu that you've not only got the plain, you've got the fruit, you've got the split, but you also got savoury scones as well. Yeah, so we do a cheddar scone, and we serve that with cream cheese and caramelised onion marmalade. Mm. So that's our sort of our savoury option, really. And do they so well? Yeah, they do. Yeah. They're quite popular. And do you just leave the sugar out of the I the don't recipe? have any sugar in my scones anyway. Don't you? So there's no sugar in there. So The sweetness coming from the jam then instead? Yeah, yeah. And the fruit, I suppose, if you've got a fruit one, but we don't really find they need the extra sugar. The other thing is I don't have any egg in my scones either. So it helps when you have people that have got allergies and intolerances. It's, um, you know, it's one thing they can usually have if they can't eat egg. So if you were making a gluten-free um, scone, what, how would you do that? What's different? I, use, I basically use a gluten-free flour. And that's the only thing I have to substitute. And the baking powder, because that contains gluten, so you can buy gluten-free baking powder. And I make the scones the same way. The only thing is I find with them, they don't keep very well, so they have to be eaten straight from the oven, really. So we have to get people to pre-order. And freshly um, served. Yeah. But it's good to know that if we were making these at home, you can literally do that direct substitute. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess because it doesn't need, I mean, you probably couldn't make the split with the gluten-free flour, no, because wouldn't you wouldn't get that dough no. bread. But certainly with the scone, it works really, really well. Yeah. Then we can also make them gluten-free and dairy-free. So now you can get dairy-free cream as well. So it's a, it's an acceptable substitution, really. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've got to say, good. absolutely wonderful. I've tried all the scones now, and it doesn't matter which one you have. They're wonderful, good. absolutely wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. We've You're seen it welcome. from the tiny little corn the, mm. today <laughs> right through to the three different types uh, of a scone and the split uh, you have here. It's absolutely wonderful. If you're down in Devon and you're down in Little Procum, you need to come down to Heal. It is outstanding. And there we are. I'm going to salute you now Thank you with very much. a good cup of Devonshire <laughs> tea as well. Good. Now, Cathy, I have a quick question. Yes. So we're going to head back to um, the Smeg Kitchen after this. And we are going to have a go at making our own clotted cream. And we've picked up clotted some cream. Jam. Wow, yes, that's I know. tricky. Well, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping I've got a couple of methods here that we can, you know, <laughs> show everyone that it's not as hard as they say. Um, but could we take some of these scones with us? Of course you may. Yeah, I'll bag some up for you. Thank you so, so much. Do you, you, you think they're going to get back in the van? Well, I'm going to look after them. They're going to be <laughs> on my under, side. They're going to be under lock and key. There we are. We're off back in the kitchen. Great, clotted cream. Yay! <laughs> Finally, we get to do some baking after all of that eating. I know. I know. Um, but of course, that does mean we've got to make and eat one more. 
okay. full cream tea. So um, what we're going to show everybody is how you can make clotted cream very easily at home. A lot of people think it's a full 12 hour process, which it is, if that's what you would like to do. We have one in the oven already. Um, but what we're going to show you is how you can make clotted cream in just 30 minutes. So very simple, very quick. Um, so almost good to serve within a short period of time as well. Okay, so what are we going to do? Is well, it same same sort of process, so same ingredients as the 12 hour one? So to make either of those methods, you need 750 ml of double cream. It mustn't be ultra heat treated or pasteurized, okay. but fresh. And we're going to heat it in this method using a wide base pan. Now we've got the smeg pans here um, and they've got a non-stick coating, which is also critical. So that wide surface area is gonna allow the cream to evaporate all the water, Ooh. but also cook it nice and quickly. So that's our 750 ml of cream in the pan. Okay. And you know, you see that lovely crust or the richness that you get from the um, clotted cream. Yeah. What we've also got is 30 grams of butter that we're going to pop into the pan as well. Ooh. Now, do you remember me saying that when you make clotted cream on the hob, it's short, but it has quite a lot of involvement. Yeah. Do you know what you've got to do for the next 20 minutes? Because we're going to let it cool a little bit, hence the 30. Go to the pub. No, you just got to keep stirring it all the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it to catch on the bottom. We're going to bring it up to a, a gentle simmer. Okay. And on this induction hob, it's- so I put it on six. You put it on six, that'll be okay. Okay. Um, we want to bring it to a nice gentle simmer. It's going to be nice and controlled, and then we might turn it down a little bit. Okay. So if you're using a gas hob, then again, a low flame to stop it from catching. So we're also using a silicon spatula. A good tip because that gives you close contact with the base of the pan to make sure it doesn't stick as well. So keep stirring Scott in a nice methodical fashion to make sure that there are no parts of that pan that are catching. So not just around the edges but all the way through the middle. So almost like a snake pattern, that's it, to give it This a... is um, a red spatula for Welsh people to work, is it? Just for you oh, and a red pan. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> so you're going to keep stirring. And what I'm going to show everybody is what we've got going on in the oven and talk through the other method if you've got a little bit more time on your hands. But we were chatting earlier, weren't we? But actually, the method in the oven, whilst it might be very long, is less labour intensive because once it goes into the oven, you can just simply leave it. It is. I'm tired already. Keep going. You've got arms. Mm. You should be good at this kind of stuff. Well, most of us got arms, we? You've got strong arms. We've got our oven and it's on at um, 80 degrees centigrade to a nice low temperature. And this one has already been on for over six hours, but the total cooking time is going to be a full 12 hours at that low 80 degrees centigrade. 12 hours? 12 hours. So what's going to happen during this process is we've done exactly the same. So we've placed the cream and the oh. butter, but in a dish, yeah. a slightly wider dish than what we're going to use later on. And what this is doing is it's allowing all of that liquid, or not all of it, but a lot of the liquid to evaporate. Okay. Okay. Um, and after we've finished, we're going to take it out of the oven, let it cool in the fridge overnight, and we'll need to drain some whey from underneath what we have is that lovely clotted cream and crust on top. That's lovely. I tell you what, you can actually see the crust forming on that as well, can you? It's already started. It's looking good and it smells so buttery and rich. Oh, it does. So if you take a look now, Scott, can you see they're starting to get a little foam on the top, which is the simmering taking place and yeah. you can see the steam coming off. So once we've got that gentle simmer, we're going to turn it down just ever so slightly. So on this one to setting five, just by using those slider controls. Perfect. Oh, look at me. Look the at precision, me. that gentle touch. I knew Do you two had things at once. Do Woo. two things at once. And you're going to have to keep going with that one for probably, well, basically, yes, we say 20 minutes, but what we're looking for is for the cream to almost halve in volume right. and become really thick. So it looks like the cottage cream that we were spreading just earlier, but in fact, it's going to be, you know, it needs to cool. It'll be even firmer once we've done that. So you still have to wait a bit. Well, it seems like it's thickened up a lot. It has, and you can see it's reduced, like we said, mm. by half. So that has been 
about 20 minutes but a good sign as well is that you're almost moving it around the the pan and you're starting to reveal the base of the pan it's which a bit is like good. scrambled eggs a little bit like scrambled yeah. eggs so it's just a little bit smoother oh, yeah, yeah. If, if you don't keep stirring it that's exactly what you'll end up with lots of lumps so now it's all good to go scott what we're going to do is we're going to pour it into a nice cool dish right and arguably the wider the better but because we reduce so much down this is perfect okay well if i give you that yeah I'll, I'll hold it yeah great perfect there you go so let's pour it in perfect and you see it's got a really thick consistency now you're really having to scrape it away from the bowl and the pan to make sure it goes in and then just level it out with the spatula to make sure it's nice and smooth before we're now going to put it into the fridge perfect okay so how long until we can actually eat it well a couple of hours if you're desperate okay but ideally you should leave it overnight but the good thing not that i think it will last with you is that um it's about three to five days in the refrigerator it will keep for no no, no chance. it's going to all be consumed not right here right now so let's just pop it into the fridge Right, should we tuck in, Scott? Let's tuck in. Tea it is. Shall I be mother? You can be mother. I'll get the cream. The most important part, seeing as this was our only contribution to this cream tea, because we've got these beautiful scones, which, to be honest, we've already had one, but why not go in for a second, of Cathy's. And we've got the beautiful jam, and now we know exactly how to eat it as well. The we proper Devonshire way. Tea, sir? Yes, please. Thank you. Lovely. Now, do you remember, um, it wasn't that long ago, to be fair, um, that Sarah taught us the etiquette, not only just of eating, but the serving. So, first of all, which scone would you like? Scone? Me? Uh, can I have a um, uh, fruit scone, please? You're going fruit, fruit. again. The fruit one. I'm going to go plain, because yeah. I went for one of Cathy's fruit ones last time. So, there's, you're going to go for the proper split. Well, there goes. Perfect. They are good. I'm going to go perfect. for the cut with a knife. <laughs> You'd like me to open the jam? Um, <laughs> yes, please. Uh, <sighs> it's because we wore you out stirring all of that cream. <laughs> Done it. <laughs> Fabulous. Oh. And we've got our two spoons. One for the jam, one for the cream. Yep. So cream on first. Uh, <laughs> Devonshire oh, way, oh, cream yeah, okay. on first. Ready? Yeah. Oh my goodness, wow. Oh, oh. look at that. On to the top. Do you want me to do the honours for you as yes, well? Yes, please. Well, I'm going to do both of mine first because I'm greedy like that. The top looks a bit golden, but it, the creaminess comes in underneath, doesn't it? It is. You've got a kind of crust, but it's not such a significant crust that you have on the oven one. But then some would say that you scrape the crust off anyway. So it's a bit of a marmite. Some people keep it, some people don't. And often in a refined tea, tea cream tea place, um, you won't see the crust at all. No, I actually scrape the crust off uh, when it comes uh, in the jar. And eat that first. I did before anybody knows. Nobody in my house knows is actually. I'd be fighting you for that, Scott, that's for sure. Right. Where would you like do you jam on top? Um I'm just gonna give mine a little bit of a a swirl, flatten out my cream, because you can see it's golden and rich. Beautiful. Oh it is. How much do you want on? Is that enough? Don't be shy. Too much? You've seen me eat this now twice. So no. I think you know how much I like to load up the scones. But well, the problem is I've I've not actually seen you eat one yet. Have you not? No. Because that, you've had your face in the cream itself. It is because I've had my eyes down and been concentrated. <laughs> I did notice that when we were with Sarah, actually. There was more eating rather than listening to the recipe that Sarah provided. Put it this way. Sarah was a good listener. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Let's go in for a third. Cheers. Cheers. To the Devonshire cream tea. Tea. Mmm. I tell you what, it works really well, that cream, isn't it? Thank you. Mm. See, sometimes well the cheap method works. Enjoy, everyone. Well, that's Devon sorted. Apparently, it is cream before jam. Well, that's definitely the Devon way. And 
of course, the monks. We heard all about them. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, then subscribe now. Or go to our social media pages, Instagram, Smeg underscore UK, or Facebook, Smeg UK, and join in the fun. Ooh, also, get yourself down and have a cream tea. Next week, we'll be in Bath, where we got the Bath Bun and Sally Lunds. Not sure what they are. We'll find out next week.